I want to ask you about the indexers quick uh, before we talk a little bit more about this, because it's something a lot of people tend to be worried about for a lot of reasons, which is this whole, this whole increase in the percentage of the market that's owned by indexers. From your perspective, you know, as that rises, it seems like we're going to have fewer and fewer high quality shareholders. Is that something you're worried about from a corporate governance standpoint? Yes, I am. That's my major worry. And, and I can say, you remember Jack Bogle, who is credited with inventing the index fund. He was certainly an intellectual pioneer. He wrote his Princeton dissertation about the concept in the 70s and went on to build up Vanguard, which specialized in the practice. And, and you know, he made a name for himself as, uh, as the, uh, uh, the, the way to, that ordinary people can get a stake in the market, get the market return at low cost. And, and, and he was very proud of that accomplishment. Jack was a friend of mine. I was, I was proud of him too. Uh, he once made a joke, uh, one of the books that you mentioned, um, Justin, the How to Think book. I, I asked Jack for a, a jacket blurb uh, and, and he called me back and said, I'd be, I'd be happy to do it because I think what you and Warren are talking about, that kind of investing, it's the second best kind of investing in the world. But even Jack, uh, just about six months before he died, he, he ran an article in the Wall Street Journal, did a bit of interview with them saying, yes, I, I created something wonderful. I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm sticking with that. But it, if it gets too big, there will be a problem. And, and he didn't say exactly what too big was, but he was saying it, it may be getting too big too soon. That is, if BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, these, these behemoths that own commanding shares, but even all the smaller ones and just ordinary, you know, small, small funds that just index, uh, they don't have the resources to study individual companies, to make decisions about who, who should be on this board, or, or whether they ought to have a staggered board or whether the CEO and chairman ought to be split, whether they ought to make this merger, they simply don't have the resources to do it. I mean, the business model is exactly the other way around. They buy small stakes in basically all the companies and then you don't have to worry about individual companies. So they simply don't have the, the resources. But somebody's got to make those decisions and, and, and the rational decision will vary with different companies. For some companies, a staggered board is a bad idea, but not for others. For some companies, splitting the chairman and CEO is a good idea, not for others. And, uh, and, and particular mergers obviously vary uh, with, with every transaction. So uh, it's, yes, it's worrying. And look, the, the, big, um, the big firms, uh, all three of them in the past 18 months began to say, we're going to increase our resources allocated to uh, proxy voting. We're gonna have a team of people study companies and study issues and make decisions. I appreciated the language, but then the staffing was minuscule. I think uh, uh, BlackRock put 40 more, 40 people uh, into this area. Uh, they, they follow tens of thousands of companies. So I worry a great deal uh, when, when, when we have this, this kind of uh, generalized proxy uh, governance. Uh, and it, it, one size does not fit all. Uh, in most aspects of corporate governance. And so uh, it's, it's very important that we have some shareholders uh, whose his incentives and inclination uh, are to, to study particular companies and then be prepared uh, on a moment's notice to decide, yes, we ought to elect this person or yes, we ought to adopt this climate change policy or what have you, rather than having a, a generalized um, system-wide uh, set of rules.